I'm here with the director of competition for the Houston Outlaws, Junkbug. <laughs> does, that, does that title ever get old? No, 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 never old. <laughs> for sure, for sure. No, yeah. it's an interesting time. We're, um, yeah, yeah, oh, we are very, in a very interesting time. <laughs> we're a week away from yeah. the playoffs. And yep. a lot has happened in the last couple of days. And yeah. I thought, like, why not talk about it? And we're going to try to have every uh, coach on from, from every team. So I wanted to yeah. see what, what your impressions were. And I uh -huh. guess we should start chronologically at the beginning and ask, how satisfied were you with your season so far? Oh, I think, I think, we're, I think generally satisfied. Generally satisfied. I think we were able to reach second place uh, on the mid season. Um, for me personally, I don't care about the regular season as much. It's it, in the end, the regular season is like a, our testing ground to grow and experiment and and just practice. And so the the playoff, the final thing is what matters the most. So. Uh, even though we were third seat, um, we don't feel like that. I think we are one of the best teams. So, uh, yeah, I think we're very satisfied with how we went. And then, so as long as we finish strong, that's all that matters. So our satisfaction of the season will come at the end. For sure. Now, you were one of the fortunate teams that was directly seated into the bracket. You didn't have to go through play-ins. And some folks say this gave those teams a big advantage. Do you agree? Yes, the every 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 little block one extra block we get to scrim. I think that actually means a lot. So yeah, I think we did get our advantage. So that's what we get for. At least there's something to get out of being a higher seed. Usually there's not much advantage having a higher seed, but this year I think it was we were compensated for having a good regular season. Sweet now. How did this advantage play out? Because, okay, in my mind, you three are locked in pretty early, clinch playoffs. You probably can start early on the patch as soon as it's available to you, I guess, to, to some uh, degree. So as soon as it hits live. Did you guys actually just actively scrim against the two other teams, so ATL and Florida, directly? Yeah, we, we, we did scrim against them. We, we also tried scrimming like a half and half blocks with the teams that try to do play-ins too, but then and uh, in the end, they they just want, wanted to focus on playing. So we didn't have a lot of too much practice actually, but the, I think just getting the feel of it at the end of the day, any, 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 any extra little bits that could, in the end, that is helpful. So in the grand scheme of things, maybe it doesn't help too much because, you know, it's only, only three teams experimenting things we don't get enough data so it has to be like elite like more teams like now it's eight teams playing against each other so we we get more meaningful data but you know even every little bits of inch i think does benefit so sure now we heard some rumors about the meta and it's it's like this zarya genji sojourn baptiste lucio thing uh -huh. that I heard like works on a on a bunch of maps. Of course, uh -huh. doesn't mean that everyone has to play this or that it's played uh -huh. on all maps. Actually, over the uh -huh. last couple of um, months, I would say like nothing is really as hard meta as, for instance, Goats was once, right? Like teams actually uh -huh. have variations, uh -huh. uh, maps play out differently. So, how hard meta is that particular composition, in your opinion? I think I think actually the Overwatch 2, the state of Overwatch 2, I think the game actually has became what the devs initially wanted. It's like anything can beat anything. So, so there are like a strong comps, but then it's not as like, oh, it's like you auto win and the other comps can't win if you're on the uh, same strength. I think I think all the comps has like, um, there are ways to win. So. The, the 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 rumored comp is the uh, is very strong right now, but I think it's not it's not like goats. It's like you have to play that to have any chance of winning. I think I think a lot of comps can be viable. Sure. Are you so far happy with your performance in those scrims and like you know leading up in this meta and also like how you're progressing? I think how we view each meta 
I think we're pretty similar to how we prepare and see in the end the the, the we have to actually play the match to get the real feel for it. The scrims is like yeah we are like it's the scrim results are more like theoretical results. Yeah yeah we did what we wanted to, do. but then in practice that's when it's really different. So I think we'll until we get to play the match. I think we we always feel good before we play the match. So we'll have to play the match to see. For sure. And one thing, one complaint I heard from other teams was that their scrim situation, just given the compartmentalization of the, you know, the different regions, a lot of teams are already on holiday because they didn't qualify. It, it, it is not as easy for everyone to get those scrim blocks. How satisfied are you with your situation? Yeah, yeah it is very hard, especially the three teams in Korea are still in Korea. So they can't, I think... And then they'll just scrim like the Korean contenders teams. So, so it is very scarce the the scrim situation. So, uh, we're, 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 so we're we, in the end we have to like play the same teams over and over every day. So so it might not be as helpful, but you just gotta work with what you have. It's like a, it, in the end every year is the same. The the playoffs, it's gonna be like hard to find scrims. Uh, it's very limited on what you can do and prepare. Is it not a weird situation that you're realistically forced to scrim your direct opposition or the favorites of the tournament more and have been doing so for the last couple of days? I guess. Yes. So I think that's why the every year the in the end the playoffs you can't really surprise anyone. It is about like. That's why I think the the best teams will win in the end because you just everybody knows what you're doing. We know all the strength, so it, it is it is just like a pure pure, or uh, just clash. Sure. Now, in order to get here and like figure out who's playing who, the league had a draft, right? And yeah. while it was chaotic, personally, I didn't hate the idea or the concept of the draft. I think it was just uh -huh. like unfortunate that, you know, because it was, there was some errors in how people perceived this to go. So like uh -huh. there wasn't as much strategy, it felt like, as it, there could have been. Or maybe there was a lot of strategy and you're about to tell us like you had this big game plan laid out. But in, in general, how satisfied are you with the outcome of the brackets? Do you like where you're sitting? Um, to tell you first about the outcome, I think I think we're, we were very satisfied with our group. I think. Uh, in, so when I thought the Hangzhou was the first seed, there were like a different scenarios we it drew up. Uh, it could it could it could come out that way. It could come out this way. But then it actually because Inferno picked London, it ended up being similar to how the Hangzhou, how the groups would have looked like if Hangzhou was first seed, actually. Right. Now, they had two different schools of strategies, I found, in how uh -huh. folks approach it. So, uh -huh. if you think you're the best team in the Overwatch League, you probably do want all the best teams in your bracket, because then you can lose once and you can still make it out, and then when it matters in the single elimination, like, you get the easy opponent from the other bracket, right? Or other folks say, well, I just, of course, want the easier bracket just so I, I can't stumble. And then in the, single, in the you know, single elimination, I trust my team to be stronger than whatever opposition we're facing. So in which category do you fall? Would you rather have played all the strongest opponents during the group stage? Or would you rather have you know, gotten the easier draw? I'll probably go with the second option if he did have the option because you, know, you don't know how the how strong each teams are. So you don't know if you're even, if you're even the best team. So I, I think it'll be too risky to go for the first option because, you know, maybe you'll just lose in the group stage. You thought you were the best team, but actually after screaming, you realize you're not. So you just gotta take the wins whenever you can get them, I would think. Right. Now, as I understood it, because London was picked, by uh, the Infernal, they then got a pick. Did you figure out like if you had gotten a pick, who you would have sent in the other bracket? Yeah, we had we have basic ideas. We have like a older teams that okay, we'll probably send this team if we get the options to like we have like older of preferences to send to the other side. Would you talk about which one you would have sent over? 
so I think we would have sent it. It depends. So, um, uh, now now the group is finished. Right. Um, how 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 I imagined with so this is with Hang Jo being first pick. <laughs> right. So so this, um, how I imagined was you know Inferno was gonna end up with Atlanta first match because mm -hmm. Inferno w will be seen as the easiest team of everyone. So I think nobody would wanna send them away. So it would have been they they would have been left with Atlanta. So. Uh, with Inferno being in Group A and then Hangzhou on Group B, people would I think I would have preferred to have the send the London on the Hangzhou side so that uh, so either we I I stay on the team that seems like that'll play with the that'll play Zarya so that it, we have a being a group that we have a easier time preparing because you know. Uh, if everybody plays Zarya, that's easier to prepare rather than uh, playing with London or Hangzhou, who we, we're not sh exactly sure what they'll play. So, uh, if we had an option, so if we're, if we, so that, that would depend on which side of the bracket we would went to. If we're like in the Hangzhou side, then we would have chosen uh, some, like, uh, try to pull in the Zarya teams in our group and then send the other teams to the other side. And then, yeah, th things like that. Things like that. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Now, the interesting part to me that I heard here was you thought the Inferno was going to be the weakest team to pick. They, of course, weren't the last seat from APAC, right? The last seat from APAC, te yeah. theoretically, is Fuel. Now, yeah. yes, this is a Zarya meta. That means it's a Hanbin yeah. meta. So, th yeah. you agree, like, this team is probably better than last pick of APAC, right? Like, how strong do you think the Fuel will be? I think Fuel, fuel is just like... um. Uh, wild card. We don't know exact strength, so if they're more similar to how I w I think people will see like Hangzhou and London. Like people are, will not have a, like a full grasp of how good they would be. So I I'll, I'll put them in the similar categories on teams to stand or not, <laughs> along with Dallas, along with uh, Hangzhou and London. Okay, so. If if you already have like a hierarchy in mind, who's on top of it? Who's who is going to be your biggest rival for the championship this, this year? Uh, I think I would think it would be mayhem. Mm -hmm. So going by the strength of what's already known among all the teams, I think it'll be like mayhem or Atlanta, right? So. Then if I had to choose one, then I'll choose Mayhem if I have to. But uh, so th for the teams without knowing the strength, then who knows? Hangzhou might be like a wild card too. So I'll I'll, I'll put them in two categories of who I would put them on the hierarchy. Okay. So, now, of course, the Mayhem recently had a substitution, or rather, a signing that they announced. Uh -huh. And it, like, the, the, Albert explained what the justification for them bringing it on was. They anticipate uh -huh. a Genji meta. According to them, who are you as the best Genji in the world? So it was like an easy choice for them. Mm -hmm. How do you think about these late stage pickups? Uh, before the se uh, before the season playoffs, and also you know this quote unquote loophole of only being able to sign uh, players that did not have an active at PSA by August twentieth or whatever it was. At this point, like I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the Blizzard will have all these rules, and so and and you know I uh, I don't I don't think too much about them anymore it's like oh we can't pick up then we'll pick up oh we can't pick up then we don't pick up <laughs> to me it's just oh well, yeah it's we reached what's the word like enlightenment we don't we don't <laughs> we don't care anymore it's whatever well how, however we go with the flow now <laughs> makes sense yeah so l like it was perfectly clear to you that you would be able to uh cl pick up these teams because like in the past for instance in the decay situation i think what people really had an issue with was, was that the pickup of washington justice of decay in 2020 was 
not clear that that was the possibility for teams to do something like this, right? Now it's pretty crystal, crystal clear to you that this was allowed? I, th I think that that year too, you, probably you, you wouldn't be able to do, but I think because of the, it was the COVID year and everything that, that I think they just like change a lot of the rules like halfway through, right? So I think that's why that happened that year. So it's like a, just like a unfortunate event stacking on each other that led to that, that year. I think this year also, I think this year was more clear on what would have, what would have been possible. Sure. Now, you had a long career, and yeah. for the last couple of um, years, your teams were always highly competitive. If you had to compare your situations prior to the playoffs, how confident, like how would you rate your confidence in being able to go all the way? Is, is this the year where you feel closest or some prior year? I think the... Two years when I won in shocks, I think then we right. had more confidence. Okay, the the first, the second season, I think second season I had the most confidence. And then I think the third season and the season now, I think are probably on a similar level. Okay, okay. interesting. Yeah. How do you expect your players to, how well adapted? Because there's a, there's a statement from Gator in my mind that's just branded in and he says every year someone gets lucky with a meta and those guys win the grand finals right uh, you just got to uh, be here how uh, lucky do, do you feel in the meta that was drawn for you how well adjusted is your team to that meta i think our i think we're like actually like never lucky <laughs> i feel like on the Actually, okay, not even the playoffs, even like the even during the regular season, sports so, so, somehow, some way, my team always play. So, th those years where we have to we play some teams two times, some teams one time, our team always plays the first seed two times, or, 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 or first and second seed two times. Like, our team is always a team that gets unlucky, who plays always the hardest matchup, and then even the meta, too. I think you know, last year. Or was it? Meta was not super good for us this year. I don't think it's super good for us. Really? But I think Fearless being able to play wins in the, pretty much the entire <laughs> season is not bad, right? Oh, okay, okay. The the first half, yeah, first half I think was good. But even the first half, no, I think no, 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 no one probably considered like Happy Pelican to be the best Tracer Sombra right. duo, right? So. I think we're like I think we had like a half of the people, like um you know like Shu and Fearless was good for the first half, but then other three were not the most confident on those heroes, right? So, but then so I think nobody would have like a perfect season for them. It'll be like how well you adapt and prepare and become good, or find your own way, like Mayhem did or London did. I think. So, uh, let's see. Was there ever a season where, like, the luckiest team actually... I would say London season one was pretty lucky in terms of meta, right? That turned their season around. No, but then uh, even the season one, too, I think, you know, Philly Philly's roster was pretty good, too, for that playoff meta. And oh, was it? last year, too... Okay, I guess last year... The the Reaper actually no even last year uh, you can people people can say it was good for so I guess Dallas had like the overall good but the, even their roster is not perfect for that matter too I would say so you know it's like, there's always like a one or two here people who wouldn't be like most comfortable on those heroes but they make it work so there's some truth to it like I think I think if anything people can be unlucky. And not be not become good, but like if you're a good team, um, I think you'll be able to do well in any meta in the end. For sure. If you had to craft the perfect outlaws meta, what would it look like in terms of heroes? Perfect outlaws meta, the double flex support, mm -hmm. uh, Winston, Genji, 
and some sort of like a Hanzo or something like that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, then that'll be, that'll be like a perfect mirror for us, I would say. For sure. Now, yeah. we are also looking down the barrel of a couple of uh, MVP announcements and like, uh, uh -huh. you know, roll stars and whatnot. Do you have a clear favorite this year for MVP? No, no, no clear favorite this year. I think I think this year is like as hard as like a season. Was it season four? Where I forgot who won, but yeah, the years were like Flatta or Leave or those people won. I think mm -hmm. it's like similar to those years. Like it's hard to choose who's a clear favorite this year. Last year was super obvious. <laughs> um, this year, yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? I think it could be anyone too, because how how I think is also very different from the other teams too. Uh, who their MVP is? Uh, for example, one of the candidates. Uh, I think Stalker deserves more than Lip, actually. Oh, okay. Because because when we when we play Atlanta during the mid season, like I think Lip played bad in our match. <laughs> But then, but then Stalker was the one who was like caring. Like we 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 do all this like setups and dive and does a really really good dive. And then the Stalker just comes in and like one clips or a pulse, and then all oh, our hard work becomes meaningless. So I think so so maybe overall, I mean overall maybe lip played well. But then in in our eyes, so I mean choosing MVP, MVP how I see it is like um, you know it has to come from you not what other people think right? right so so i think from from our team's perspective when we faced each team um like the person that felt the difficult most difficult from atlanta would have been in stalker but uh other teams but other team mvps also i think did, did really well so it'll be hard i think it, it'll probably in the end it'll probably become like someone on the left right i think that's like the cons general consensus so I think I think I think all of them are deserving though in the end. Yeah. Do you think like if you had if uh, someone actually won, would you mind that? Like, do you think that's deserved? For someone, yeah, I think I think someone someone deserves to. It's 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 really hard to pinpoint like one single person who did great. So I think this year was no single person stood out really hard. I think a lot of it was like how the teams play really well together. For sure. Now there's another trophy up for grabs, and that's one. That one is probably a little bit more personal. Who do you think? Like, if you, it's of course always like hard to say if oneself deserves the award, but like if you had to nominate a coach of the year, who would it be for you this year? This year is probably Gamba, because they were able to make the. Uh, so you know, Winston Chase or Sombra seemed strong, but then they were able to make the Ram poking comp work. So I think I think so. They they were like um London in their own ways. Like um they they saw I mean they them playing Winston Chase or Sombra uh they would have been like uh not a strong team, but then they were able to find their uh what's what's good for them. So I think it's probably Gumba this year. For sure. Awesome. Then I, I don't think there's anything left to say other than good luck in the playoffs. And uh, we're looking forward to your performances. All right. Thank you.